Okay, so in the first uh, video of this particular session, session five in our series of six lessons on behavioural economics, uh, we took a look at the some of the trends in the UK gambling industry. Uh, we then look at, uh, looked at some of the behavioural biases which can influence the behaviour of players in the sector and in particular increase the risk of becoming a problem or at-risk gambler. In this second session, I'm just going to introduce you again to the idea of nudge, behavioural nudges, which perhaps can be used to address addiction. As with the session on obesity, uh, behavioural nudges, if we're going to address the issue of problem gambling, it means trying to change behaviour at scale, the behaviour conceivably of hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people. And there's a genuine debate in economics, certainly in policy making, about whether behavioural nudges on their own are enough to make a real and persistent a lasting difference. But let's crack on and see what we can come up with. This is a chance for you to press that pause button if you're doing this lesson at home and perhaps try to think of three nudges that might help to address the issue of problem and at risk gambling. So could you think of three aspects, three aspects of nudging which could perhaps prompt people to uh, to gamble a little less and reduce the risk of uh, financial and mental ill health. I asked my students to go away in groups and uh, when they came back from their breakout sessions, there were some really good examples. I've summarised a few of them here. Uh, one is to make clear the amount you're spending and also make clear the odds of winning money back. If the, if the odds of winning money back are presented clearly, perhaps prominently, on a machine, what have you, on, uh, on an online system, then that gives people information which can help address bounded rationality. Another student suggested that uh, you should be sent a text message to you. Send a text message to you saying how much you've lost in a given session, perhaps to remind people. And I suppose that confirms uh, the loss and perhaps uh, makes that more prominent in your mind. It increases what's called the saliency of the cost of your session. You might express, for example, the average cost per minute of having gambled, etc. And that express things in pounds per minute can make quite a difference. Somebody suggested that if you're entering a, a, a betting shop or something, you're entering a slot machine arcade, then the you know the administrators, the owners would have to display prominently a sign. The last person who won a jackpot was X months, weeks, years ago. Uh, and then again, you could make a case for saying that it actually stimulates people to gamble. If you think the last person who won a jackpot was six months ago, you might be more likely to go in. Clear warnings on the risk of losing. Gambling causes suffering, so some have some warning systems akin to perhaps health warnings. There is obviously something called gamble aware, but perhaps we should raise the uh, ramp up the level of warnings, similar to cigarette packets. Adding the picture of a loved one to your gambling profile could be a way, a kind of social nudge there to remind you of the consequences of gambling. One slightly quirky, I quite like this example, that if you're at the casino, or if you're in another kind of you know, betting uh, arena, the chips should be heavier at the table. The bigger chips, you know, the more expensive chips, should be significantly heavier. So that reminds you of just how much uh, you're throwing onto the roulette table, onto the onto the poker table. Or only buy casino chips with cash. Not allowed to use uh, credit cards and debit cards, etc., uh, to get over that mental accounting issue. Some great examples there. I quite like it. Again, I would love to love to see what you come up with. Maybe leave some comments in the comments section. Lots of behavioural nudges are or have been tried or are being considered. One is to cut the default on minimum bets. So the UK government has brought down the maximum bet on a fixed odd betting machine from £100 all the way down to £2. It took a lot of time, a lot of lobbying and negotiating, negotiation, a lot of delay. But the uh, the bet, the maximum, I think the maximum stake, so the maximum stake is now £2 on a fixed odd betting machine. Social nudges, notification to friends and family if a gambling limit's been exceeded. Put a bit of social pressure on you. Make the odds of winning more transparent. I'm in tune with my students there. And another idea is to bring uh, bring automatic cooling off periods during gambling play. So if you're gambling for half an hour, maybe you get a cooling off period every 10 minutes, let's say for three minutes, where you have to gather your thoughts. And, and there may be a case for saying that, that can, if you interrupt the gambling play that can cause some people to uh, to reflect on what they've what they've won or lost and perhaps take a break and not necessarily carry on. Well, there's a debate here about how effective nudges might be. Uh, some people argue that actually it's such a problem 
it's such an issue that we have to go beyond the world of gentle nudging and perhaps we have to we have to introduce some shoves shoves are essentially hard nudges so for example you could introduce a ban on gambling companies from all forms of sports advertising somebody was saying that well over half of the Premier League and Championship soccer clubs last season 2019-2020 had a gambling company as their shirt sponsor well over half maybe ramp up NHS spending on things like therapeutic therapeutic counselling you could raise the minimum gambling age to 21 years uh, uh, from 18 okay you you might decide long term to significantly increase the the spending and the focus on financial education in schools including uh, gambling and perhaps mandatory affordability checks for all online gamblers. Actually, some uh, some mobile phone companies are working this and some banks. I think Monzo has a system with its debit card that you can't necessarily use a Monzo card for online gambling. But affordability checks, uh, and that, that brings a friction into the gambling process, which can maybe ha- perhaps act as a barrier to addiction. This is clearly an area, an issue, a topic, of great interest to behavioural scientists, behavioural economists, and also, I think, to the wider public. Uh, Gambling addiction and obesity are two really good examples of applied economics in action. And it's interesting, that economics, we look at the theory, and then we think about application of theory to the real world and try to get a feel for the best approaches to take. That is really the essence of so much we study in A-level economics. Okay, session six. Uh, which is down here at session four. It's session six is behavioral economics at the movies, and I hope you're going to join me for that lesson.